I'm up to my old tricks again. <laughs> Welcome back to No Can Do. My name is Clara and today I want to know if flipping vintage chairs is still profitable in 2022. I've made a couple thousand dollars doing this over the past two years and that's how I paid for rent when I was working a teaching job and couldn't afford my rent otherwise. I definitely haven't seen that many of those chairs available on Facebook Marketplace anymore. I want to know if it's still profitable to flip vintage chairs. Let's find out. So I'm starting with these two floral vintage chairs that I got for free from next door. They aren't swivel rockers. They have legs on them and they're in pretty decent condition other than the fact that they're pretty dirty. So I brought them home and they're kind of a wild pattern, which is harder to sell. Um, the velvet ones that are a simple pattern are usually easier to sell, but I think I might even want to keep these because my style is moving more maximalist. So I'm just going to get started and see what happens. You never know what treasures you're going to find in somebody else's furniture. Luckily this time it was just a wholesome note from some kids who were visiting their grandparents and a candy cane and some other random bits of trash. I'm obsessed with my new Ryobi vacuum. The one battery goes with all my power tools and with the vacuum it's cordless. I, it's just a game changer. I don't know how I survived before I had it. On to the next chair again, I'm just taking off the cushions, giving it a good clean, inspecting it, and finding any of the trash I can find. Now that I vacuumed it, I'm going to use my Bissell Little Green Pet Pro, which is the best upholstery cleaner that I could find. I've tried several of them and it's my favorite. I am just filling up the water tank with some warm water. I just use faucet water as hot as it gets and then I'm going to put in a squirt of dish soap and uh, an ounce or so of white vinegar and that'll be the cleaning solution. You really do not need to buy any fancy cleaning solutions out there. This will get the job done. I've done it on probably... 30 or 40 chairs at this point. As always, I'm taking my Bissell, I'm turning it on, and I'm spraying the whole chair down. There's a spray trigger that is on the handle of the Bissell. You want to make sure you get a really good coat and maybe do it a little bit more generously than you think you might need to because, of course, the chair is going to absorb some of that. Now that I have finished spraying down both the chairs, I'm going to go back over both of them with the same tool, but this time I'm using the suction vacuum feature. So I'm actually just pressing down and making sure that I have a really good connection, a good suction between the suction tool and the chair itself to make sure that I can get up a lot of that water and all get out all the dirt and grime that is hiding in this chair.
even though these chairs were in pretty good shape and they looked pretty clean, I doubt that anyone has done this deep cleaning in the past 30 or 40 years. And so now you can see what the dirty water tank looks like. It is really, really gross. And this, my friends, is why we clean the chairs. Now, if you like the look of the dust skirt, you can just keep the dust skirt on. No problem, you have yourself some new chairs. I do not like the look of the dust skirt. I prefer to see the legs. And what I'm doing now is ripping the skirt off. Before any of you come for me in the comments and say, oh, you should just tuck it under, maybe I taught you that trick because that's my most popular video. I have a video with over 50,000 views that says, this is the better way to flip chairs. Don't rip the skirt off. You should just tuck it under and staple it. While I stand by that, that works better on the swivel rockers because you can actually just literally fold the dust skirt under. But when these old chairs have the legs, they get in the way and you can't just perfectly fold the skirt under. The problem with ripping the skirt off is that sometimes where you rip it off, there's about an inch or two under the skirt that has never seen the light of day and so usually the rest of the chair is super faded. So I checked this time to make sure that it wasn't a different color fabric under there than the rest of the chair. I think these chair legs look super cool and they were just hiding under those old grandma dust skirts. So even with the dust skirts on to protect them, they still have a lot of scratches. I'm going to go ahead and clean them first, get the sticker off and then see what I can do to refinish or repair them. Now that the legs are clean, I'm gonna clean up the scratches using some Howard's Restore Finish. It's gonna go over all of those scratches and nicks and dings and make them blend in with the rest of the legs. And I'm using a steel wool pad to apply this. Look how good that looks! That's after using Howard's Restore Finish and it only took like two minutes to do all the legs, so I'm impressed. While we're waiting on that, I want to take a moment to tell you about today's sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for anyone who loves learning, trying new things, and wants to explore their creativity. If you have a specific skill that you're wanting to learn, there's probably a class on Skillshare. It's the perfect place for you to start from photography to illustration, graphic design, freelancing. You can find classes that will match your goals and your interests. I'm taking a class called Productivity for Creatives, Make More of Your Time, taught by Thomas Frank and Ali Abdal. The first 1,000 people to use the link down below will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. So make sure to use my link for a free trial to join Skillshare and learn something inspiring and new. Okay, so here's the deal. I really wanna keep these chairs. As I said before, my style has gotten a little less mid-century modern and a little bit more maximalist. So I'm super into colors and patterns and I have a lot of solid color walls in my apartment. So I wanna use floral designs and patterns and things like that to kind of spruce things up. So I'm gonna keep these chairs, but that means in order to do that, I need to sell a couple other chairs first. I still have these two white chairs that I flipped when I was doing a West Elm dupe, and I'll link that video down below. And so I need to sell both of those. And I have a pink swivel rocker that I got for free and thought might look good in my apartment, but I like these chairs so much better. So I'm gonna clean those up as well, list them and see what I can get for them. All right, y'all, this was a super quick flip and now here's the final result. I 
I love the way this chair looks. I have two of them. One of them is in my office as pictured here and the other is in my living room waiting to be styled. I love the colors of it. I think it goes so well with my home and the green and the pink go well with other decor that I have as well. The good news is that I listed all of those on Facebook Marketplace and OfferUp and I sold each of those West Elm dupe chairs um, for $120 each. So I made $240 on those and I sold the pink silver rocker for $80. I just made a bit over $300 off of those chairs and I also have these chairs which I got for free. So I would say yes it is still profitable to flip and resell vintage chairs in 2022. Do you want to see more content like this? If so, check out my chairs playlist. I'll link it right here and I'll see you at the next flip.